So I watched J-Lo's This Is Me Now. Okay, but for real, can we talk about this? Hello, darlings, and welcome to Performance Perspective, where we watch different performances and then we share our perspectives. If you're new here, hi, I'm Carolyn, but you could call me Care. And if you're back, yes, this is my new cartoon self or whenever I'm like, oh, I can't put on my makeup. I don't know, but I really want to create something and just talk to you about what I just watched. So getting into it, when I heard about Jennifer Lopez starring in a new movie titled This Is Me Now, my first thought was, oh, another love story. And honestly, I, I didn't dig any deeper. You know, despite being a total sucker for classics like Made in Manhattan, Monster-in-Law, Hustlers, Second Act, and uh, The Wedding Planner, just to hey, name a few, when Marry Me rolled around, I hit a moment where I thought maybe it's time to hop off the JLo movie bandwagon. So yeah, I wasn't exactly jumping at the chance to see it. That all changed when my husband convinced me to check out the trailer and oh boy did I. Suddenly, I found myself scratching my head thinking, wait, is this a musical? It was promoted as a musical experience and true enough, it delivered just that with its release intertwined with her album of the same name. This movie unfolds Jennifer Lopez's quest for love seen through her own lens. It got me pondering, is this kind of like Beyonce's Lemonade film? You know, where Beyonce brilliantly visualized her album for HBO? We will circle back to that. The whole concept threw me for a loop because it not only features J-Lo's latest album, but also boasts a lineup that reads like a who's who of Hollywood and beyond. We're talking Jane Fonda, Kiki Palmer, Sofia Vergara, and even Jay Shetty. Yeah, Jay Shetty. I was like, what's he doing here? And sure, Ben Affleck makes an appearance because why not? But keep your eyes peeled for a news reporter named Rex. The cast list doesn't stop there. Post Malone, Kim Petras, and Jennifer Lewis also show up and more. The intriguing part? They're all playing zodiac signs. Yet, the Aquarius and Capricorn are not to be seen. So I'm left wondering, did budget play a role or does J-Lo have something against those signs? The storyline centers around the main character's quest for love, or rather, that elusive soulmate. It kicks off with a sort of myth or fairy tale that the protagonist grew up hearing, one about a woman and a man deeply in love, but her father disapproved of their union. As the story goes, the woman is transformed into a red flower, and when her lover discovers this, he becomes a hummingbird. So the tale suggests that every time we see a hummingbird flying from one flower to another, it's him continuing his search for his true love. We then dive into the protagonist's journey, navigating through heartbreaks, toxic relationships, and friendships. She's always on the lookout for signs, making her way to therapy sessions, embracing self-love, and yes, ultimately crossing paths with her soulmate. It's a roller coaster of emotional growth and discovery, leading her to find that special someone. So the movie finally dropped on Prime, and I've got to be honest, it didn't completely win me over. However, I believe in giving credit where it's due, and there's some stuff worth celebrating. The visuals had their moments, and my favorite, um, it's gotta be when she's in that steampunk industrial setting attempting to rescue the machine heart. That part was visually captivating. The choreography in the film was undeniably stunning, but there are moments when it felt a bit too much. Take for instance, the scene where JLo attends love addict meetings. Yes, it goes there, I know. As she begins to sing, the people in the meeting break into a dance. While the dance itself is impressive, this song is meant to highlight the character's vulnerability. Coming from a musical theater background, one of the key lessons I've learned is the power of stillness, the impact of focusing solely on the lyrics. Just when the song concludes, another meeting attendee engages in a dialogue with her, expressing how much he connected with what she shared, reinforcing the idea that they're not alone in their struggles. However, I found myself at a loss for what she actually sang about. All thanks to being completely taken by the background dancers and their energetic moves that ranges from seizure-like jerks to hip-hop bops. 
Overall, the whole film felt a bit scattered, trying to juggle too many themes and ideas at once. The tone of the movie just didn't gel together. It makes me wonder if, during the writing process, J.Lo was aiming for a blend of gravitas and humor, wanting to be seen as serious, yet also funny and relatable, all the while maintaining that undeniable hot vibe. <laughs> For instance, there's a scene right after a heartfelt therapy session where she tells her therapist, played by Fat Joe, that she's totally okay with taking the bus home, even though it's about to rain. And I'm sitting there thinking, girl, we've all seen your mansion. You really don't have a car or can't call an Uber? It's those little moments that just make you pause and chuckle at the disconnect. There's the scene where her friends, thinking she's a sex addict, stage an intervention. The vibe was all over the place. They were aiming for comedy, but it landed in the realm of cringe. JLo walks in with a new lover, despite her history of three failed marriages, and this guy is just, um, like, off randomly dropping a gun. It was probably meant to be a laugh moment, but it just felt absurd. And then in a snap, the tone shifts dramatically. JLo delivers this sort of fake Oscar worthy monologue about preferring love over loneliness, even calling out her friends on their own romantic shortcomings. But I know I'm a lot closer to finding someone than you are. Honestly, it missed the mark from what must have seemed like a winning idea in the writer's room. Now, to be fair, they threw a curveball at the end that genuinely caught my attention. And I have to admit, I really enjoyed that twist. I will share what the twist is at the end, just in case you do want to go watch the movie and then enjoy the twist yourself. Honestly, this felt like a bootleg version of Beyonce's Lemonade film. The key difference? Beyonce's music was simply superior. No offense to J.Lo, but the songs just didn't hit the mark. Plus, there was a real intrigue surrounding Beyonce and Jay-Z's affair. People were eager to get a glimpse into what happened. Beyonce's album was like her public therapy session paving the way for their reconciliation. The film served as her visual exploration of the stages of grief following infidelity. So while J.Lo's musical film didn't quite win me over, I've got to say, using film as a medium to complement an album is a stroke of genius for musical artists. I mean, who would I love to see take on this kind of project next? I mean, Katy Perry and Taylor Swift, top of my list. Imagine the stories they could tell and what if, ugh, what if Britney Spears made her come back this way? As for the guys, uh, it's a bit harder to pinpoint, but artists like The Weeknd, Ed Sheeran, or Bruno Mars could bring something special to the table. Though it does seem like women such as Lady Gaga, Megan Thee Stallion, or Lizzo have a knack for expressing themselves in this format. I mean, wouldn't it be amazing to see their stories unfold in a musical film? Anyways, that's my perspective about this is me now. And <laughs> I would love to know your thoughts. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you love talking about musicals and performances. And this is usually when I say, and without further ado, take care, darling, which I do mean take care. Now, here it is, the spoiler about the ending, the curveball that made me go, oh, that was really good. So the whole time, based on that fairy tale about the man going to, you know, he's a hummingbird going flower to flower um, in order to find his love. But then there's some symbolism at the end to show that J.Lo is the hummingbird and she's going to flower and flower to find her soulmate. And I was like, oh, what a twist. They got me on that. Anyways, that's it. That was the, the big thing from it. I thought, oh. That was really good. Uh, but yeah, okay. Now, without further ado, take care, darling.